Are people who play the lottery just stupid? Or can economics help us figure out their motives? Let's look into the research and see what we can find out. Gambling is big business. One Vegas roulette table makes more money than the Vegas hockey team. And roulette is generous compared to the lottery. In roulette, the house keeps 5%. In the lottery, 50%. So when I buy a $5 ticket, I am just giving away $2.50, just lighting it on fire. That's why people say the lottery is a tax on people who don't understand statistics, or to be blunt, a tax on stupid people. Is that really a satisfying answer though? Calling people stupid because they do something you don't like may be the basis of the modern internet, but it's not really a good way to do science. So can economics explain why people play the lottery? In econ speak, the lottery has negative expected value, meaning on average you will lose money. Conversely, investing in stocks or bonds has positive expected value. That's why playing the lottery seems stupid. But hold on now, one of the largest industries in the world, something we all do, also has negative expected value. I'm talking about insurance and no one calls insurance stupid. In fact, it's often seen as smart. So what is the difference? All right. Imagine I offer you a proposition, a 50% shot at $200. Half the time you get 200, the other half you get zero. Or you can take $100 for sure. Most people take the $100. Why is that? It's because humans have concave utility functions, which is econ speak for losses hurt more than gains feel good. You can probably remember every negative comment about you online, I know I can, but none of the good ones. You tell stories about the bad beaten poker, but can barely recall your wins. Blame evolution for this. We are more sensitive to losses because back on the savanna, one misstep meant death. It is my hypothesis that we have concave utility. Speak for yourself, I definitely have linear utility. Kevin? Kevin, where'd you go? Uh, probably nothing. Oh God, that's a lion. If only my parameter of risk aversion would have been higher. So we're programmed to be very aware of negative stimuli. Fortune may favor the bold, but evolution favors the risk adverse. That's why most people take the safe bet because losing a guaranteed hundred bucks and going all the way down to zero would feel worse than winning a hundred bucks would feel good. In fact, most people would take $95 instead of the zero or 200 bet. They'd take less than the expected value, $100, because they'd rather pay a little to remove the risk of losing everything. They'd rather the small guaranteed loss versus the chance of the bigger loss. That's insurance. The bias that drives this behavior is called loss aversion. Now flip it. Imagine gains feel better than losses hurt then people might take on more risk. And that could explain lottery players. So maybe our explanation is some people love risk and buy lottery tickets, while others hate risk and buy insurance. But here's the problem. The same people who buy insurance also buy lottery tickets. So we can't just divide the population into scared risk avoiders and yellow risk takers. Economists first stab at explaining this phenomena came in 1948. These authors propose that maybe people are risk adverse at low incomes. You don't wanna lose everything when you have little, but became risk loving once you reach a certain point. But the data doesn't support that. Lottery players, the risk lovers, are disproportionately low income. So where do we go from here? Hall and Oates, Laverne and Shirley, Starsky and Hutch. These are all 1970s power duos that you've probably never heard of. But let's not forget the greatest 70s duo of them all, Cheech and, no, I'm kidding, Kahneman and Tversky. Best friends who revolutionized economics by discovering the biases that plague our decision making. One of their insights, people overestimate low probabilities, meaning they think rare events are much more likely than they actually are. That bias is part of what Kahneman and Tversky called prospect theory. You can see this bias everywhere. Beachgoers think there might be a shark attack. There won't. Travelers think their plane might crash. It won't. And professors think students will remember their class. They won't. This bias explains why people both over-insure against rare losses and buy lottery tickets hoping for rare wins. This theory says people buy lottery tickets to convert the impossible into the improbable and thanks to prospect theory, the improbable feels possible. 
Great job, Kahneman and Tversky. Here's your Nobel Prize. But watch out. A recent paper changes everything. Ryan Opria did a clever experiment. He said to his participants, we got 100 boxes here. 10 have 100 bucks in it. We'll open one box and give you the money. How much would you value this opportunity? It's a 10% chance at $100. Mathematically, it's worth $10. But people overvalued it. They were willing to pay more than $10 for that 10% chance at $100. This is just as Kahneman and Tversky predicted. Prospect theory. But here's where it gets weird. Opria then removed the risk. Here's how he explained it to the participants. He said, we still got the 100 boxes. Instead of picking one box at random though, we're gonna open all the 100 boxes, add up the money, divide by the number of boxes, and give you that. So just to be clear what's happening, they're basically gonna open up all the boxes. We're gonna have $100 times 10. So we're gonna have $1,000 divided by 100. So they're gonna get $10 for sure, no risk. And then he asked them, how much would you value this opportunity? And people's answers didn't change. So if they were willing to pay $12 for that 10% chance at $100, they were also willing to pay $12 for what was now a guaranteed $10. Even when the risk was removed, people still overvalued the gamble that was no longer a gamble. And obviously this is crazy. You're thinking, what's going on here? Note the researchers didn't explain the math to their participants. They just said, hey, we're gonna open these 100 boxes, 10 of 100 bucks, we'll add that all up, divide by 100, you get that amount. So in the end, what Opria concludes is it's not about misestimating the probabilities. It's not that people think 10% is more like a 20% chance. It's that they're struggling to process the complexity of the problem. They couldn't do the math. Now, it should be noted that later research showed that a subset of the participants, usually STEM majors, did actually adjust their answers once the gamble was removed. They figured it out. But the rest, it seems like they just don't really understand what's happening. Politely speaking, maybe the lottery really is a tax on people who can't do math. And that brings us back to where we started the video. Except maybe we're thinking about this all wrong. What if the lottery ticket isn't really the product? What if the product is that after I buy the ticket, I get to dream? Daydream about the vacations, the cars, the Lego cars. That's the product. In fact, a field experiment from the Netherlands found exactly this. People's happiness went up after buying a lottery ticket and stayed up until the drawing, even though they knew it was almost certain that they wouldn't win. This phenomenon would explain why lottery tickets sell more in low-income areas. The harder your life, the more a daydream is worth. So yeah, lottery players are lighting money on fire, but they're getting more than just ashes, they're getting hope. Did I get that from this lottery ticket? No, because I'm an economist and therefore I don't have dreams. I know that buying this is indeed just like lighting money on fire. Lighting money on fire, by the way, is illegal. But lighting an unscratched lottery ticket isn't illegal. So let's do it. After all, statistically, this is worthless. So I have a demolitions expert here to light this on fire. Are you ready? Yes. All right, give me the camera and let's get it on. You just, you just polishing off that lottery ticket, Nadine. Huh, yeah. Did you learn about statistics today? No. <laughs> Did you learn about fire? 